Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Griff. I'm coming to you from Chicago, as usual. I got I got some serious clips today. Interesting stuff, but it's it's a little serious. So so I had to go searching for for something. I thought, what do we like? We like we like Judge Middleton. We like puppies, and not a brat sent me a clip that has both. Let's do it. Okay. Yep. I can hear you. You have your legal assistant there with you? Yes, sir. All right. Now let's get to the heart of the matter. Okay. So I did a video a while back and it was called anger management. And, uh, uh, this, this husband and wife are losing custody of their children because they can't, uh, they can't stop with the drugs. As far as I can tell, at least that's the way it appears to me watching these hearings. And there, there, there has been a subsequent hearing. And then this one, I cut most of it out. It's a long hearing, but it's really interesting when the judge gets to it. This is down in Texas and, uh, well, you'll see. Mr. Ferris, Ms. Smith, your case has been bumped up a level. You're no That's longer a in a family-based services case. You're no longer in a court-ordered services case. The case you're in now means that your legal parental rights could be restricted or even terminated. It's gotten very serious for you two as parents. And when I make orders, I expect that they'll be followed. I don't expect for any excuses, such as I bite my nails. I don't expect any excuses. I didn't know I was supposed to go do a drug screen because here's what we're gonna do. The heart of the problem appears to be drug usage. We're going to address that first because I think if we address that. Yeah, this is good. I, I cut most of it out. It was a long hearing. I cut probably an hour of it out and, and just got down to the, to the main thing where the judge did it. She didn't show anything the whole time. They were sitting there saying, oh, I, I bite my nails, which is why you, why you can't test there. And I dye my hair and I didn't know I wasn't supposed to and all this stuff. And she just looked at the whole thing impassively. And I'm thinking, what a load of BS all this is. Apparently, so is the judge. <laughs> it's Judge Melissa Mc... Mix something. I don't know. Tell me in the chat what, what the judge's name is. But it got transferred over to her, and uh, it, it was beautiful to see when she, when she uh, finally gets around to it, like right here. A lot of the domestic violence we saw will stop. So I'm ordering both of you to an inpatient program for 90 days each, immediately. You will take the first available bed, and if you don't, your visits with your children will stop until you do go to an inpatient program. Once you receive, once you go to the inpatient. And for those of you who aren't familiar, the father is Trevor Ferris, bottom left. The mother is Ashley Smith, second, for, uh, second to the left, second to the top. Program, you will stay in the program. You won't get yourself kicked out. You won't walk out. Or if you do, I'll terminate your parental rights. It's no ifs, ands, or buts. I will terminate your parental rights your attorneys know me well enough to know that. If you go in for 90 days and you complete it and you come back and you use again, I will terminate your parental rights. I'm sure that Ms. Johnson and her husband would be happy to adopt their grandchildren. Yeah, they'd be very happy, that's all that. Mr. Pa yeah, Mr. Mr. Ferris, Ferris, Mr. Ferris Mr. don't watch your language or you'll be held in contempt of court. You're already in contempt of court for violating the court order not to color your hair. Now, here's something else about the that, that, that was uh, Mr. Ferris, who was who, who was held in contempt last time and in, in order to anger management. Apparently that that well, based on the testimony, it didn't happen. But if it did happen, it failed drug screens. If you don't show up for a drug screen, if you cut your nails, if you shave your head, if you dye your hair, if you do any of that stuff again and I can't get a reasonable test that I can trust. I'm going to hold you in contempt of court and I'll throw you in jail. Your Honor. I'm, I'm very serious about that. Hang on, Mr. Katmeyer, please. I'm very serious about that. Now, talk to your attorneys. Maybe you've decided that parenting isn't for you. And if it's not, your attorneys have paperwork for you. It'll prevent you from having to go through this whole rigmarole 
of pretending that you really want a parent when you don't. Because if your children matter to you, you will stop using illegal substances. And Mr. Ferris, you can roll your eyes and shake your head at me all you want. Okay? But this is not your mother's fault. It's not anyone's fault but yours and Miss Smith's. No one forced you to take methamphetamines. Been a no long time. one forced Trevor, Trevor, you. Don't stop. talk to me, Mr. Ferris. No one forced you to beat up on each other, bust each other's windshields out, and act like that. And for oh, oh, yeah. In case you're wondering, he just drops out of the hearing. For the record, your client just left, Mr. Hardy. He doesn't want. He doesn't want to hear it. So, Ms. Smith, here's yes, the deal. Here's the deal. You either nice. sink or swim with Mr. Ferris. If he's okay. not going to get with the program and he wants you to carry the weight on your shoulders, then you're going to sink with him. So you need to make a choice between drugs and your children and between Mr. Ferris and your children. I can't say it any clearer than that. This is where you are in your life right now, and this is no one's fault but yours. And the sooner you and Mr. Ferris admit it and figure it out and own it, you'll move on and you'll get better and you'll get your children back. But if you deny, 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 and tell me that you bite your nails and that you don't color your hair and that you don't go up and do this and you don't do that, I am not, I didn't you know, just do this yesterday. This isn't my first day. Okay, so get it done. I can I have a ask a question? Uh, yes. Um, can the can, um, stop? Can the can the inpatient treatment program is that um, something through the state? Like, does it have to be a certain one? Yes, they can help you get a program. Okay, they will help you get it. The state of Texas will pay for it. But you will both go to the very first available bed, and you'll start looking today. Yes, ma'am. And if you don't go to that first available bed saying, oh, I don't like that place. I want to go down here because their food's better. Or this other place has bed bugs. A parent that cares about their child isn't going to care about the food that they're being fed. No, yes, ma'am. I understand. Okay. So take the first available bed. In the meantime, you'll continue your visits. If you stop. In other words, if you don't go to the first available bed, your visits will stop. And then when you do go into inpatient, Great. they're going to have their own visitation policy. And we'll work with that policy for you to see your children then. Yes, ma'am. Um, your Honor, what kind of visits will they have pending inpatient? I don't know what visits they have now. I think I stopped them at the last hearing because of something. I don't remember what it was that made me stop it. Let me see what my notes say. And and they were stopped at the last the last court date, and the department would ask that those visits continue to be stopped at this point, given that no one has been cooperating with. It's the it's the anger, them. it's the anger and the inability to act like civilized people. Miss Smith, Mister Ferris, grow up, be adults, and talk to people that you have to deal with. That you have to deal with respectfully and they will all be respectful to you and your honor with that i would ask that you give them the opportunity to have some visits with their children by all accounts the visits do go well and they're about to have to go to inpatient so they won't get that many i'll give them one more visit each okay uh, visits going well that's that doesn't matter to me not if you're going to use drugs and beat each other up and be disrespectful and hateful and scream in front of the children. I don't know if you know the emotional damage that screaming parents do to their children. That's but it's idea. not healthy. Ms. Smith, where are your parents? My dad lives in East Texas and my mom's just not a mom. Okay. How do you like not having a mom and a dad? I don't know. Well, how do you think your children will feel when they don't have you? Well, probably worse than I feel because it's different circumstances. Okay, well, get my point then, okay? You are the one in control of that. You and Mr. Ferris, 
You all are driving this bus, and we're all along for the ride, including your children. The two of you need to decide if you're going to turn it around and head it in the right direction or not, or if you're going to run off the road into a ditch. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, Your Honor, I do have some information I wanted to share with the court. Okay. If, if I could. Please. If she is so compulsive that she cannot stop chewing her nails, because I've had friends that could never stop. Oh, my God. This guy's got to stop. I know some people have issues with chewing their nails, but it was complete and utter nonsense. Her argument was that she was chewing her nails and, and that she couldn't stop and that she did it while she was sleeping. I, I'm not making that up. That was the argument she was making during her testimony. I had a similar situation in a case a couple weeks ago, and we went to Fastest Labs. Yes, that includes toenails. Sorry. I, I, sorry, I had to live through it. You do too now. <laughs> in San Antonio, off University Heights, they do toenails. Mr. McCatmire, she can simply stop coloring her hair. So I can get a reading that's reasonably priced and that I can trust, and that's at 90 days. I'm not going to accommodate people like this. They're going to follow my orders. I'm not going to create that. I appreciate what you're trying to do. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so your next hearing is a status hearing, September 13th at 1.30. That's September 13th at 1.30. First permanency, November, I'm sorry, December 13th at 3.30. December 13th at 3.30. Second permanency, April 4th at 10. That's April 4th at 10. And trial finally is May 23rd at 1.30. May 23rd at 1.30. All of those will be via Zoom, this very same Zoom meeting number. You all have been real good about getting on early, and I appreciate it, so continue to do that. Um, our dismissal date is July the 10th of 2023. I, I, it, wouldn't it be convenient, though? It would just be like, you know, you could do whatever you want and say, you know, it's like my evil twin. I was like, I was asleep, you know? All the felonies I've committed, I was asleep. <laughs> July 10th of 2023, I am an associate judge. You have a right to object to me presiding over the final trial. Your attorneys will talk to you about what that means. In addition to that, you have a right to demand juries. Jury demands are going to be due anywhere between uh, March the 3rd and April 3rd. March 3rd and April 3rd. And uh, let me ask the parents uh, the ICWA question. Ms. Smith, do you have any reason to believe that your children would be eligible for membership in a Native American tribe? I don't think so. Are I, you a member of a tribe, Ms. Smith? No. Mr. Thomas, are you a member of a tribe, sir? No, ma'am. Is Mr. Ferris a member of a tribe? No. So ICWA is denied. Okay, now let's talk about jurisdiction. Ms. Smith, this house on Peach Street where you're staying, mm -hmm. is that the one that, um, is that the only VRBO you've been in? Yes, ma'am. Since you left Guadalupe County? Yes, ma'am. What are your plans for the future? I guess go to an inpatient rehab. Well, very good answer. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> very good answer. But my point is, where do you all plan to reside? Um, oh, I, if we have the kids, I want to be in Austin because they have a school for deaf children. That was our original plan. But um, if not, then right here in Comal or Guadalupe, so we're for the kids. Okay. We're not talking about a year ahead. I'm talking about when this VRBO time runs out and you have to do something more permanent than a temporary lodging. Where will you be living? Around Guadalupe County. Okay, so it's your in a van down by the river. Intent to move back to Guadalupe. Or yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So we'll be transferring this collect case over to Guadalupe County. And I believe the attorneys on this case. Do you all work in Guadalupe? No, I I am not in Guadalupe County. Okay. Your Honor, may I also ask a question about Logan? Uh, yes. Again, since he's been returned to his father, is he really a necessary subject child to this case? Well, if his mother's going to continue using uh, drugs, then it might be important that he have uh, some finality in his relationship with her, too. Ouch. 
take that. Yes, I agree, Your Honor, because she has custody right now under the Attorney General order. Okay. If we so, drop off, then she'll get the child back. Okay. So correct all that. We're going to take this back over to Judge Stuckey. And Judge Stuckey will uh, handle the case from this day forward. Your Honor, the parents are in Comal and so are the children. We're transferring it to Guadalupe today. Or yes, it's her, her, their intent to reside in Guadalupe County. That's what Ms. Smith told the court under oath. So we're going to trust that the truth. Okay, folks, parents, the law requires that I give you a warning at the end of every hearing. And that warning is that if you cannot or will not provide a safe and stable home, for your children, your parental rights may be restricted or terminated. Good luck to you. I'll see you. Well, um, they're going to transfer this over to Guadalupe so you'll get some new dates. But if you haven't heard from them by September 13th at 1.30, I'll see you here. Thank you all. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Don't make Oscar beg. It's rude. We're live on YouTube. Okay, well, there you have it with that. That's the update. The way I see it, and I watched uh, most of that hearing well. I didn't watch it. I had stuff going on. I multitasked, but it was in the background, so I caught bits of it. Uh, I I think that the the only hope for those two to ever get their children back is to, is to go through treatment, like she said, and if that's successful. And I, I don't know what the odds of that are. I have no idea. But that is literally the only hope I see. They currently, they're, they're just lying, making no sense. It, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't know. It, it, my estimation is they're lying about everything. They're you know they're changing their hair color. They're they're um, biting the nails. All this stuff is is to prevent uh, drug tests because they're continuously using. Is is my guess, and that is that certainly seems to be the judge's perception as well. And she she sees that's the root cause of everything. We either fix that or we don't. We, we fix that or we terminate parent, parental rights and then, you know, what happens, happens. I, th I think she's absolutely on top of it. This is uh, another one. It's a new judge. Judge Jamo or Jamo. I don't know. He's in, he's in Ingham County, Michigan, I think. This one's just kind of interesting. Like I said, these clips today, they're, they're, they're fairly serious, although – this one, this guy's kind of charming. It's it's a and it's a change for us. The defendants do the right things in these cases. I mean, they did the wrong things to get in the cases. But once here, they're listening to their attorneys and just following along. Um, this this guy screwed up. He absolutely screwed up. But he's charming. He just he just uh, he's got an alcohol problem. He went on a naughty adventure in the in the middle of <laughs> in the middle of his treatment. But he seems to want to do better. Yeah. We're on the record in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan versus Armando Garza. It is case number 20-496-FH. We're here this afternoon for a hearing on a bench warrant arraignment on probation violation charges. We're conducting the hearing by way of video conference. It is being live streamed for public access. Counsel, please put your appearance on the record and indicate consent or objection to having the hearing by way of video conference. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Natalie Maycomber on behalf of the people. We do consent to hold this hearing by way of video conference. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Attorney Aaron Schroeder on behalf of Armando Garza, who appears today from the Ingham County Jail. Uh, no objection to the use of um, uh, video uh, technology use. Thank you. Sir, you are in fact Armando Garza? Yes. Mr. Garza, you are joining us from the Ingham County yes. Jail, correct? Yes. All right. We're here, as I said, for arraignment on the probation violation charges. And uh, you can see and hear me on that screen that's in front of you. True? True. You can also see and hear Ms. Schroeder and Ms. Maycumber, and you can also probably see Ms. Farr and Ms. Andrews. All true? It's jammy. That's yes. it. That changes during right. the hearing. Let me know that in some way so we can address the technology issue. Also, if you need to speak with Ms. Schroeder during the hearing, simply let me know and we will arrange that, okay? Okay. Now, you are here today um, because you're charged with violating the terms and conditions of your probation. Ms. Schroeder, have you and Mr. Garza seen the written notice of the charges? Thank you, Honor. I have seen them. I, 
I'm unsure if Mr. Garza has been provided a copy of them myself. Um, I, I quick turnaround on this ended up being a little bit difficult with get, talking to him ahead of time, but uh, um, if I can have a brief breakout room with him, I can take care of that real fast. Yeah. Unless the court just wants to address it here on the record. I'm going to read them to him anyway. Okay. But if you need to speak with him in a breakout room about anything else, you're certainly welcome to do that. But I am um, going to review the charges with him. Yes, let's just, I, I think, mainly my main concern is I don't know if I've ever gotten an official recommendation from probation, so I will hold off for the moment on any breakout room until I have that official. Thank you. Agent Farr, are there any amendments to the charges? No, Your Honor. Mr. Garza, it is charged in count one that you violated your probation and that you left the House of Commons against staff advice on August 17, 2022, and that you had not returned um, to the House of Commons. In count two, it is charged that you tested positive for alcohol on or about 8-18-2022 and, in, in, and that that was at Sparrow Hospital. And in count three, it is charged that at Sparrow Hospital on that same date, you also tested positive for marijuana. Do you understand those charges? Yes, Your Honor. If proven true, if you're found to have violated your probation in one or more of the ways stated, it could result in a penalty of up to 10 years incarceration because it's based on a potential maximum sentence on your underlying conviction. It also could result in termination of your participation in specialty court and any other probation sanctions that may flow from that, including termination of your probation. Now, you have the right to be represented by an attorney throughout these proceedings. You are represented by the Public Defender's Office, specifically by attorney Erin Schroeder, as she just indicated. And you, of course, know Ms. Schroeder from working with her yeah, the, the first video is called Anger Management, and there's a link to it in the description of this video. Uh, well, will I be able to speak with her in private? Pardon? Will I be able to speak with her in private? Sure. Um, let me finish uh, advising you of your rights because she may, you and she may want to talk about your options once you hear the rest of this, okay? Okay. All right. So now, in addition to having the right to be represented by an attorney, you have the right to contest these charges at a hearing where you could appear yourself or with the assistance of an attorney and hear the evidence presented by the probation agent and the assistant prosecuting attorney, and you could question any witnesses who testify, and you would also be able to um, present your own evidence. So I will... Um, at this point, have Ms. Smith put Ms. Schroeder and uh, Mr. Garza in a breakout room. I don't know, Ms. Schroeder, do you want Ms. Agent Fire, Ms. Fire in there as well? I frankly yeah. thought this was pretty clear cut as to the plan, but um, I, I, yeah, I would appreciate it. I, I. As I've said to, Ms. to Agent Farr in an email, she just was confirming. I believe I understand exactly what the recommendation was going to be, but I had not. I don't recall seeing an official like, "Yes, this is what we are going to do," and I did not want to step on anyone's toes. So I will. So, so do you want her in or out? Yes, of the please. Meeting? Yes, I would like her in. I think it would be potentially unless Miss and then Mr. Garza. If you change your mind at some point, we can mm -hmm. have just you and me. Do you want Ms. Andrews? No, do you want Ms. Andrews in as well or no? Yes. Okay. Okay. Ms. Smith, if you'll arrange that, please. And, and I think Morgan, I got lost in the shuffle on the recommendation, so that's on me. Um, there are some we're, issues. We're, we're still live streaming. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Judge. Okay, as soon as we bring the judge. <laughs> That, that's modest, but it made me laugh. It's it's very subtle, but it's just Judge saying, you know, before you say anything stupid, we are on YouTube. <laughs> back, we'll continue. Going to be a plea. I, I, I got lost in the shuffle of all the emails between him and I think Morgan. I got lost in the shuffle on the recommendation, so that's on me. Um, there are some we're, issues. We're, we're still live streaming. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Judge. Okay, as soon as we bring the jail. Oops, I messed up the editing, but that's okay. We got that we're still live live streaming twice. Back, we'll continue.
Mr. Garza, you've had a chance to uh, speak privately with Ms. Schroeder, correct? Yes. All right. Are you ready to proceed? Yes, sir. Ms. Schroeder, are you ready as well? Yes, Your Honor, we are. Okay, so the question for you, Mr. Garza and Ms. Schroeder can help you out with this if you like. The question for you is whether you wish to have a contested hearing as to these charges, or is it your intention to waive your right to a contested hearing and admit to the violations? Admit to the violation. Is that correct, Ms. Schroeder? That is my understanding for speaking with him and after uh, having feedback from Ms. Andrews and Ms. and Agent Carr. Thank you. When they just give up and capitulate, I can't help but like the defendants. I'm sorry. I mean, right, right back to maybe it's Nathan Lean with the was it was that the shoplifting or the crack pipe? This this guy's the same deal. It's like whatever. I did it. I, I'm not hiding it from it. You know, I shouldn't have done it, and I did it. That's it. That's his whole attitude. Mr. Garza, will you please raise your right hand for me? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. You can put your hand down. I want to, uh, again, remind you that the potential sentence is up to 10 years incarceration. You also could lose your participation in the specialty court. Uh, further, that by pleading guilty, you will be giving up all the rights you would have had at a contested hearing, including the right to have an attorney represent you at that hearing, the right to have the witnesses against you appear, and for you to be able to question those witnesses, the right to have me order witnesses to appear for your defense at the hearing, the right for you to testify if you wanted to testify instead of exercising your right to remain silent, and the right to have the charges proven by a preponderance of the evidence. Do you understand that you have all those rights? Yes, sir. Do you understand that if you admit to these violations, or in other words, if you plead guilty to them, you are giving up each and every one of those rights? Yes, sir. And knowing that, how do you wish to plead to those three counts that I read to you a moment ago? Guilty. Has anyone promised you anything or threatened you in any way or used any other form of coercion to get you to plead guilty or, in other words, to admit to these three violations? No, sir. Are you pleading guilty because you believe that you, in fact, did violate your probation conditions in the way stated in these three allegations or these three charges? Yes, sir. If yep. your plea is accepted by me, you will be giving up any claim that you admitted to these violations as a result of a promise or a threat not disclosed to me during this hearing, and you're also giving up any claim that it was not your own choice to enter this guilty plea. Do you understand all that? Yes, sir. Now, you were at the House of Commons pursuant to the order that was entered that you complete the program there, correct? Correct. That was part of the specialty court programming as well as your overall probation requirement, correct? Correct. Is it true and accurate that uh, on or about August 17, 2022, you left the House of Commons against uh, staff advice or, in, in other words, without permission from the court? Yes, sir. Is it also true, as stated in counts two and three, that you eventually ended up at Sparrow Hospital, and while there, they tested you for alcohol and marijuana, and you were uh, found to uh, be positive for use of both of those substances. Is that all true? Yes, sir. Yep. Is that because you, in fact, did consume That's alcohol like and marijuana after you left the House of Commons? Yes, sir. And I'm going to accept your guilty plea. I find it as understanding, accurate, and voluntary, and knowingly made without any duress or coercion. We're now going to move into the sentencing part of this hearing. And um, due to my involvement last week with respect to how to proceed in this, I do know what the recommendation is, but I'll have Ms. Farr state it for the record. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. The recommendation is for Mr. Garza to report back to House of Commons. Uh, he will be transported tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., and the intake will be completed at then uh, at that time, and to continue on probation and with specialty court. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Schroeder, any comments on behalf of Mr. Garza? Mm -hmm. Very briefly, Your Honor, I would ask the court to adopt that recommendation. Mr. Garza has indicated he is 
uh, fully on board with that, uh, wants to go back to treatment. There are some concerns he brought to our attention while in the breakout room that I will uh, ask the appropriate individuals to address here shortly, but um, there are some concerns pending his uh, intake tomorrow that probably should be at least ad somewhat addressed to the best of our ability today, as well as potential impact going forward uh, with certain aspects of our program. Thank you. Mr. Garza, is there anything you wish to tell me before I make a decision here? No, Your Honor. What do you think about going back to the House of Commons? I believe I'm willing to do that and I'm going to complete. I'm not going to leave. I'm going to do everything I have to do and I'm going to stay there. Okay. Until it's time for me to go. All right. So, Ms. Schroeder, you uh, referenced some issues with regard to the transportation tomorrow? Do we need to sort those out? Um, well, I, I I think it's more of his current situation in ICJ. He brought to our attention that he has not had his Seroquel since he's been in custody, uh, even though it was dropped off. My understanding is he has been informed by the jail that they won't give it to him. Um, and that is part of the issue that I think I do know that the jail has changed recently who provides medical care while there uh, from the, the the health department to an outside, I believe, private agency. Um, All right. This is for the many bleeding hearts in my audience. And I, I'm with you on this. I am. But everyone says, oh, it's horrible. They should give medications. And you'll see that the judge takes this quite seriously and does and is not is not happy that they're not doing it. Number one. Number two is that nobody cares. They just want to punish. Well, if they just want to punish, they could have rung this guy up for 10 years on a clear violation that he that he pled to. Uh, this guy absolutely violated in the most blatant way possible. And uh, and he gets he gets another chance. And the judge is not happy about this medication issue. My suspicion is uh, that uh, they may not be qualified or certified to distribute higher level psychiatric medication. And Mr. Garza has indicated that he is having a lot of um, symptoms of his schizophrenia uh, uh, coming through to the point of he's uh, very emotional is how he put it and has been requesting and we're going to see if we can. I believe Agent Farr has sent an email that I believe the court was copied on regarding potentially having him, at least for tonight, housed in an individual cell as opposed to a uh, community type setting where he is right now because of the uh, oh I want to say I don't want to say triggering but the um, sensory overload issues that seem to be coming along with that and making it difficult for him to for lack of a way, somewhat maintain long enough to make sure that he gets where he needs to go tomorrow um, but I'm concerned to hear that they won't give a, an inmate Seroquel uh, when that has been a very common, from what I understand, uh, uh, not maybe not common, but a very standard uh, prescription. And I don't believe we've ever run into that issue before in my memory. So it was concerning. Thank you. Ms. Maycomber, do you have anything you want to add with regard to the uh, recommendation and the plan? No, Your Honor, I would just ask that you adopt that recommendation and plan. So there you go. You've got the prosecutor and the probation agent basically lobbying for the guy. And I know why they're lobbying for the guy, because the guy screwed up, admits it, and 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 is sincerely trying to 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 fix himself. And so these aren't mean spirited people. They're like, all right, if you're on board, let's do what we can do to help you. Ms. Andrews, is there anything you would like to add, ma'am? No, Your Honor. I'm going to adopt the recommendation. We need to get Mr. Garza back to the House of Commons. It's disappointing to hear that there is uh, an issue with his medication in the jail. Um, that's something that needs to be addressed. Agent Farr, if you don't hear back from uh, Captain Earl shortly, uh, let me know that and I'll call out there. Um, we need to get that uh, taken care of. He will be um, held until tomorrow morning for transport to the House of Commons to complete the program. 
And um, does anybody know how this is going to be handled in terms of disruption of the program? Is he picking up from where he left off? He's not, Your Honor. According to uh, Mr. Keel at House of Commons, everything will be handled at the intake process again, almost like another assessment to see how long he should he should stay there. So he might end up doing more than the 14 days that he had left in the program. Uh, so it just depends on the level of care that's decided that he needs. Okay, I am going to order Mr. Garza that you serve seven days jail with credit for seven days served. You are assessed a $150 bench warrant assessment. The bench warrant is set aside. We'll continue with his participation in the specialty court and continue his probation. Is there anything else um, for the record before I cover his appellate rights? Ms. Schroeder. Nothing further from the defense, Schroeder. Thank you. Ms. Maycumber. No, Your Honor. Thank you. Your Honor, his probation is set to expire in April of 2023. Would you like to extend that now or revisit? We can revisit it later. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. He's about to go into the appellate rights, and I really enjoy how the defendant does not give two hoots about the appellate rights in the right way. It's very charming. Garza, you're entitled to file an application for leave to appeal your conviction and your sentence in this probation violation um, proceeding. You have the right to be represented by an attorney throughout any appellate proceedings. If you cannot afford one, one would be appointed for you at public expense. You'd have to make that request, though, within 42 days of today's hearing. They have uh, uh, okay. written okay, copies. Sorry? That's okay, Your Honor. Okay. <laughs> I have to tell you your rights even if you choose not to. Um, not to I don't need this appellate stuff. I'm not doing it. It was, it was my fault. I'm in. I pled. Let's go. Question, appellate lawyer. And they do have okay. the written notice of your appellate rights in the jail, as I think you're aware, which is also the form you use if you want to request appointment of an appellate attorney. You do not need to return the form if you are not asking for an appellate attorney to be appointed. Now, um, when he is returned to House of Commons, is he going to appear at the review hearing next week? I believe that was a plan, Your Honor. Okay. So, Mr. Garza, we will be um, talking with you, either Judge McCormick or I will be, or maybe both, we'll be talking with you next week once you get resettled there at the House of Commons, okay? Okay. So we'll see if we can get your medication issue taken care of or move you to an appropriate cell um, today, and then tomorrow morning you'll be taken over to the House of Commons. Okay. Okay, good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. That concludes this hearing. All right. So, so Judge Milton's back from vacation, and uh, this was also sent to me in Discord. I can't remember who sent this, but I, I just I just took the picture. I like it. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's trying to hold court, and it all goes sideways. It's it's too good. <laughs> Stop driving. Uh, do you have Lucretia Absher, please? Yes, yes, sir, I do. Okay, this is a new judge to the channel, I believe. Oh, he's somewhat familiar. I don't know. I've done so many videos. He may have been on the channel before, but I don't think so. I think this guy's new to the channel. Either way, he's he's pretty cool. He's he's very professional and straightforward, but he's he's a little spunky, like on the down low now now and then. It's it's fun to watch. Thank you. What do we give me the short version? Lesser included offense, manslaughter, 15 years, Judge. Should have both sides. It's it's a it's a she's taking a plea to manslaughter, which is a downgrade. So that's the deal. So it's a it's a murder case, and the judge comes in. I get it. That's what he did, deals with all day in his court. He's like, yeah, can you give me the short version? <laughs> I don't blame him. I, I like it. That's fair for Ken, uh, Q Judge. 
20-34516 is first called the state of Texas versus Lucretia Renee Asher. Is that you, ma'am? Yes, sir. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that any statements you make today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Lower your hand. Due to the state's emergency orders regarding the COVID virus, we are unable to be in the same room together today. We have fashioned this live, real-time video conference. So even though we are at different locations, we are together just as though we were in the same room. It has the same effect under law. Yes, Do you sir. And how that shall work in your cases. Yes, sir. Okay. Defendants' acknowledgments by remote live video conference during a virtual meeting is signed, made a part of the record for all purposes. You see your attorney, Mr. Kimler, he's waving at you. And let's Cherokee sign he likes to give. <laughs> and uh, the prosecutor he has his back to you. And I'm here. You're there. Yes, First sir. thing we're going to do this. 34516 is an indictment handed up on June 10th, 2020 for murder. I understand that an agreement has been reached where you are going to be pleading guilty to the second degree felony of manslaughter. Is that true? Yes, sir. Does the defendant waive a formal reading of the indictment and the arraignment here? Can we proceed in summary? She does. In, uh, in paragraphs two and three are just abandoned. Right, yes, the yes, prior sir. convictions. Paragraph one, in summary, alleges that on or about May 13th, 2020, in Jefferson County, Texas, you committed the first degree felony of murder. Do you understand uh, using a deadly weapon, namely a knife? Do you understand what you were charged with in the indictment? Yes, sir. And in, an agreement has been reached. You would be guilty to the second degree felony of manslaughter. Is that your understanding of the agreement? Yes, sir. And I would explain to her that there would be a deadly weapon finding with the manslaughter as well. Hard to kill somebody without one. That's what I've always kind of thought. Manslaughter is... Um, stand by. Manslaughter is found under Section 19.04 of the Texas Penal Code, and the law states that a person commits an offense if he or she recklessly causes the death of an individual. That is a felony of the second degree. Do you understand what we're charged with there? Yes, sir. Furthermore, under Section 6.03 of the Texas Penal Code, the law provides that a person acts recklessly or is reckless with respect to circumstances surrounding their conduct or the result of their conduct when they are aware of but consciously disregard a substantial and unjustifiable risk that the circumstances exist or the result will occur. The risk must be of such a nature and degree that its disregard constitutes a gross deviation from the standard of care that an ordinary person would exercise under all the circumstances as viewed from the actor's standpoint, your standpoint in this case. Do you follow along with that? Do you understand what the law provides? And has your attorney discussed all of that with you, ma'am? Yes, sir. <clears throat> This is a second degree felony if convicted, and that means if convicted, you face a term of not more than 20 years or less than two years in prison. In addition, a fine may be assessed not to exceed $10,000. Do you understand? Yes, sir. An agreement has been reached where you would be pleading guilty, sentenced to 15 years in prison, and it looks like a misdemeanor and the felony 234175 would be dismissed. Is that your understanding uh, of the agreement? Yes, sir. If I follow this agreement, you have no right of appeal of your uh, cases. Do you understand? Yes, sir. How do you plead to the lesser included second degree felony of manslaughter under this indictment? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Are you pleading guilty voluntarily? That is on your own free will and because you are guilty? Yes, sir. Show you what's marked here, States Exhibit 1. Did you sign that? 
Yes, sir. Did you understand it? Discuss its contents with your attorney, or is everything true and correct here? Yes, sir. Case Exhibit 1 is tendered into it. Without objection. And without objection admitted. Among other things, this states you are mentally competent to enter guilty plea, which is freely and voluntarily made. You understand what you're charged with. The indictment's been read to you. You've read it. You were guilty of the crime charged and any lesser included offenses, such as manslaughter here. You were giving up your rights to a jury trial, the right to the appearance, confrontation, cross-examination of witnesses. You were totally satisfied with the representation. I don't know why, and maybe a criminal defense attorney can tell me. These are things I don't know, but I find it strange that they had her plead to murder and uh, with the deal that she gets convicted of manslaughter. I don't know why they wouldn't have her plead to manslaughter. It's just that that's just the form of the plea. I'm sure it's the way they do it in Texas. I'm confident that Judge Stevens knows what he's doing. He seems like a very sharp guy. Like I said, he does. He just he throws little things underneath. He's very professional, but he, he <laughs> he's kind of funny. Like like he'd be he'd be fun to go have a drink with. And provided by your lawyer, all of this is true. It states so help you God. Is that so? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, states exhibit one is part of the record for all purposes. Is a pre-sentence report waived in this case? So waived. Anything else to add? I'm going to follow this agreement. If not, then Miss Absher, I'm going to find you are pleading guilty today voluntarily to this lesser included second degree felony of manslaughter. Yes, you are sir. mentally competent to do so. You understand the consequences of pleading guilty. Yes, sir. There's sufficient evidence from State's Exhibit 1 admitted here to support your guilty plea to find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of this second-degree felony of manslaughter. I now find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of that crime as alleged in this indictment as a lesser-included offense. I am following the agreement, and you were hereby sentenced uh, to confinement in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice to serve a term of 15 years. Having been found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of the underlying facts of this case, the judgment shall reflect an affirmative finding that a deadly weapon, namely a knife, was used to commit the offense. Do you understand what has happened today, ma'am? Yes, sir. And this 234175 will be dismissed as part of this agreement. Anything else? We rest. That is all. Thank you. Good luck to you, Mr. Schultz. Thank you. Good luck with this. Thank you. Uh, one seven five is before the court, and it is dismissed on this thing. Cameron Scott is. Cameron Scott is with Mr. Uh, Burbank, Burbank. Yes, and you said Mr. Burbank was still in another trial? The capital murder trial. Cap uh, so we're going to have to... Oops, I must have forgot to cut off the very end of it. I just thought those were interesting. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I try to do, do what I can with the clips, and today it's just what I came across was serious stuff. But I thought it was interesting. I thought they were they were interesting. They they weren't. Uh, you know, I I like I like the crazy moments. The uh, the people showing up without a shirt on and and doing wacky stuff in court. But these these were just interesting to me. We usually don't get that serious a charge, uh, and, and and that was just neat to see. And and obviously the um, update of anger management that that was serious stuff. Hi, Kathy. How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, th that was another that was another thing about these clips. Um well, the second two. The the first one, the, the first one was just the update of anger management and you see nothing's changed over there. But the other two it was it's sort of it's oddly refreshing. They were, I mean, this one was guilty of murder. Okay? And the and the other guy was guilty of sin. He just he just bailed out of uh court ordered treatment and went out and got drunk. <laughs> Plain and simple. Ends up in the hospital, high, drunk, the whole thing. But he's like, Yeah, I did it. I, you know, I did it. I don't want to appeal it. I don't want to do anything. Do what you will to me, but I did it. Um 
And both of them worked with their attorneys and absolutely cooperated, and it helped both of them tremendously. Uh, th- that woman's doing 15 years, but uh, which which I think is an appropriate result for it. I don't know the, uh, all the underlying facts of the case. Yes, it's murder, but uh, you don't know what was going on or why or what, what, what ability they had to prove it or what – if there was some – yeah, you don't know if this was a struggle between two people or just a straight up victim. I don't know. I don't know these facts, but it certainly was wise of her to listen to her attorney and accept this offer because they could probably have proved up the the uh, a higher charge, and she would have never seen the light of day again. Now, she what she bought herself is a chance to maybe see the outside world again. Uh, that's a good result for a defendant uh, sitting in that spot. It just is, and it shows that if you if you work with your attorney and stuff, that doesn't mean you just uh, that doesn't mean you just get away free. It means that you get the best res- result possible under the circumstance. That that's what you're shooting for in court. Is the, the, you don't you just don't get miracles. You just <laughs> you know you just oh I want a million dollar judgment. Well, okay, yeah, a lot of people do. But do you have any, do you have any claim that merits that? Yeah, you know, or I want to get off scot free. Okay. Sure, we all do, but do you have a defense that 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 would would get you there? These people did the best they could with bad circumstances, and and, and it was oddly refreshing to watch. All right, well, thank you all for coming out. That was that was just the Monday. Those are the clips I got. Those are the clips I got. And thanks for our, and thanks to Nada for sending me the one the one lighthearted clip I had in the beginning. And whoever else sent me the other one from, from Judge Middleton, who's probably wanting to be back on Mackinac Island already. All right. I will see you all soon.